In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front driver's side window regulator on this Ford F-150. The same procedure will apply to the passenger side front. Let's get started. I like to start at the door handle. You don't have to, but pull the handle out and then with a pick or a trim tool, remove this plastic cap here. Sometimes it'll be hard to take off, it might require a little bit of force. Uh, they are clipped in pretty tight here. There we go. Pry this away. This will expose an eight millimeter bolt. Remove it. Set it aside safely. Inside the grab handle, you'll notice a little cap. Take a pick or a pocket screwdriver, whatever you have that'll get in here. You have to pry this up. There we go. Once you pry it up halfway, you can go to the other side and pry it up the rest of the way. This will expose another eight millimeter bolt. Remove that as well. Pull it out of there. It's not the same as the other one, so make sure you don't mix them up. At the bottom of the door panel, you have two six millimeter screws. There's one right over here. Whoa. Take that out. And then the other one is towards the inside of the door. Take that one out as well. Let's remove the master window switch. Use a trim tool, pry it up in the back here. Be somewhat gentle, you don't want to break it. And work your way to the front. It should slide up and out, at which point you can flip it over once you have it out of there. And you'll see three main harnesses here. Start with this one at the back, unplug it, then this one in the middle and this last one at the front for the lock switch and set that aside. Now take the door panel, slide it up and it should unlock. Don't go too far with it because the mirror switch is still connected. So remove it off of the door. To disconnect the door latch cable has two tabs, one on each side. I'm using a pick, but you can use anything that'll squeeze them in. And once you squeeze one in, try to pry it through to hold it squeezed in. Pry the other side. This is not going to be super easy, but this is the only way to get this out of here, unfortunately. Perfect. Slide it out. Take the ball end of it out of the door handle. Set it aside. Now the mirror switch that adjusts your mirrors has a tab on the front side of it. Press it and disconnect it. And now you can pull your door panel away. Now we have to take this piece off, which is only held on with an eight millimeter screw over here or bolt, and then the rest will twist off once this is out. So remove it. And then, then you wanna grab it, twist this that way, and this up, pull it away, which will expose this bracket right here with the three eight millimeter bolts that this is held on with. Remove all three of these. Set this aside. Now you want to peel the vapor barrier off. Start on the outer part of the door here. I'm not going to peel the whole thing away. Just enough to expose the area that I need to work in. Make sure this sticky part either stays on the door or comes with it. It's important so that you can stick it back when the time comes. There we go. Leave this over here. If your window is not rolled up all the way, you're going to have to do that. So plug the window switch back in, turn the ignition on, and roll it up all the way. If it is, well, just skip this step because the two bolts that hold the window onto the regulator, you can access through these two openings and the window has to be up for this to line up. At this point, I can disconnect the window switch again, turn the ignition off, and let's continue. Now we wanna secure the window. I like to use some tape. Masking tape is best because any other tape will leave a bunch of residue behind. This will hold it in place, but will not leave anything behind. And the thicker the tape, the better. If you're using the really thin, narrow strips, it's likely to break. I like to go about halfway down the window on the inside, stick it, go over the top of the door. And stick it on the outside, unfortunately, because of the curve of the door. 
tape kind of goes sideways, but we'll be, we'll be okay over here. Do the same thing. You want to support the glass while the window regulator is disconnected, otherwise it could fall down and shatter. I like to do three to four strips of tape here to have a proper uh, secure point holding the window on. Now with a 10 millimeter socket, let's loosen up the bolts holding the regulator and the glass together. You don't want to remove this all the way. All you want to do is just loosen it up a few turns because the regulator has two little arms that pinch the glass and you just want to let those go and you just want to release those off of the window. Same over here. Loosen this up a little bit, just a few turns. There we go. Give it one more. Now with the window switch reconnected and the ignition on, roll down the regulator. The window will not come down with it, but we need to release the regulator and pull it down and away from the window. Go slow. There we go. And right here you can see the, uh, well, you can't see it on this side, but you can see it on this side. That's the part that attaches to the window, which is what we were aiming for. Now we can pull the regulator off. Turn the ignition off and let's continue. All we have now are several 10 millimeter bolts to undo and the whole regulator assembly should come right out. Start over here. A nut at the bottom. At the bottom on the other side, another mounting nut. The motor has a 10 millimeter bolt right here. Last but not least, this one up here. The window regulator should now be able to get pulled off of the door. Slide out one side, slide out the other side. The window motor is still connected at this point and we can get to the connector now that it's away from the door. So press on the tab, release it slide the rest of it out and there is the regulator with the motor. To remove this motor from the regulator you have three eight millimeter bolts, one in here, well they're actually screws, they screw into plastic, and two at the bottom. Pull those off and now can remove this. There's your motor. Let's transfer it over. On the new regulator, you'll notice there's a wire tie holding this gear in place. Go ahead and cut that off. I like to add a little bit of silicone paste to these gears here and ensure that they are properly lubricated so that it doesn't make any sort of squeaky noises over time. So the new window regulator. To position it properly, we first need to figure out how it sits in the door. The two top uh, brackets here, they come with two new bolts, which is great, but remember these are the bolts at the top that hook into the door, whereas at the bottom it had studs and mounting nuts. So clearly it goes like this, top to bottom. Also it's curved, so it'll follow the curvature of the door. So this basically determines how you're setting these rails up. This is important because you need to know where to bolt the motor onto, because technically the cables could reach to either side but it obviously only can go on one of the sides. At this point, you wanna take this piece and if you flip it over, it should line up with these holes perfectly. As you can see, it has little cutouts, but then we need to put the motor into it. So line up the splines on that, just like this, and make sure that the shaft of the motor goes in through that, just like this. Line this up again, and with it flipped over, we can install the screws right through the motor and clamp it all together. Let's 
going to be tricky to hold it all in place. Looks like I got one started. That's perfect. And get the second one started. Get the third one started. And tighten them all up. As you tighten them, make sure everything is still seated correctly. And just make it snug. If it's screwing into plastic, you don't want to break the plastic here because then it won't sit properly. Last one. And there we go. Motor is reattached, clocked properly. This is exactly how it came out of the door. Just as a side note, the gray cable should sit on the top going from the right hand side to the left hand side rail. And on the new regulator, let's back off these 10 millimeter bolts for the top here. The reason for that is so that we can actually slide it into the door. It's slotted with a wider hole and then a narrower part of it at the bottom. So you basically hook it in and latch it and this will hold the top of the regulator for you as you try and line up the rest of it. And we'll do the same for the other side. It'll hold both sides on at the top. Just back it off a couple threads. There we go. Now let's install it in the door. Now let's get the window regulator in, slide it in through this large opening of the door. I'm gonna put the right hand side in first so that it can be mounted and out of the way of the other side. Make sure this doesn't get caught. And as you slide it in, connect the window motor. And now we wanna aim the, that top mounting screw Aim this top mounting screw into the slotted opening at the top here. And once you do that, you can pivot it and line up the bottom. Now, grab this and with the top lined up, you should pivot to the point where the bottom lines up. And to keep it in place, I'm just going to put one of these mounting nuts on it. I'm not gonna tighten it yet. I'm just gonna put it here so that it stays, which will allow us to put the other side in slide this up and line up the top. Oops. There we go. And automatically the bottom should line up. And that pokes through. If it doesn't, just make sure the cable isn't stuck on anything and you can pull it that way. Start this mounting nut on as well. So at this point, the only bolt that is not started is going to be this one on the motor. This is the last bolt. The top two already came with the regulator, so now we just have to tighten them all up. It doesn't matter where you start. I'm gonna start on the motor. Make sure that's nice and snug. Tighten up the top two. And the bottom mounting nuts. Now with the switch plugged back in, ignition is on. Let's roll the window regulator up. That's gonna move the two uh, pinch points for the window all the way up. Be careful though, because they are shut all the way at this point. So we wanna get them close, then get our 10 millimeter socket through these openings, widen them, spread them out, clamp the window, and then we will be all set. So go up until you can see the bolts, which is right about here for me. So with this, still plugged in because I'm gonna to need to operate it. I'm gonna go in and loosen up these mounting bolts. Take your 10 millimeter socket and loosen up this bolt over here. Perfect. And then we'll do the same to the other side. And these are the two little arms that will pinch on the window. So now that they're lined up, let's roll the window regulator up. Make sure that they're both lined up. You don't want to jam these into the window on the other side. All the way, this puts pressure on the window. And now we can clamp these down and lock the window onto the regulator. Now stick your socket through here, clamp these down. You don't want to make them too tight. You don't want to break the glass. This is bottomed out right here. It's gonna go an extra quarter turn at most. 
This will squish that rubber piece in there and clamp onto the window. Let's do the same to the other side. That's bottomed out. Give it an extra quarter turn. Don't make it very tight. And now let's test out the window. Get the tape off. Now let's test the window. Roll it down and up. Everything works, no strange noises. If something happens that is not supposed to happen, such as it binds up or there's noise, inspect everything you did and fix it accordingly. Now let's put the vapor barrier back. Make sure the uh, sticky tape here sticks for the most part. If for some reason you can't get this to stay back here, you can use some regular tape, painter's tape, anything you have, but it's important that this at least gets pressed up against the door because as it rains, water does actually get in through your window a little bit and you want to prevent that water from coming into the door inside the cabin. So just press this up against here. And now let's put the bracket on that sits up here. Let's put this bracket on, which goes over here with the three bolts, supports the armrest. Start those in. Tighten this up. Now we're going to take this larger foam piece and you want to clip these white clips into the gray retainers like that. There's one at the bottom, one up top here or on the side. And then at the top, it has one eight millimeter bolt. That's tight. Now bring your door panel in and connect the mirror switch. And for the door handle switch, you'll notice the cable end has a little uh, ball end on it. Connect that to the handle itself. Bring it over like this, and you're going to want to push it through this hole until it latches in. You should not be able to pull this out. And of course, test the operation of the door handle to make sure before you close this up. One last thing before the door panel finally goes on, make sure these wires go through for the window switch. Okay. As we put the door panel in, you want to pay attention to the lock indicator. It needs to go through the little hole, otherwise it'll get jammed in there. Most likely your door panel won't even sit all the way because it'll be blocked by that. So bring this up and press it up against the door. And as it goes down, as you can see right now, it has not gone through the hole yet. I can see it. It's lined up. So I'm going to press the door panel down. And there we go. It was in the locked position, but if you just pull the door handle, it should pop up and through. Now let's put the bottom two screws in. Don't tighten these up too much. They screw into plastic and they are very coarse thread, so they will strip the plastic out easily. Perfect. Now don't forget about the screw that goes into the grab handle. Tighten that down and there's a little cap that hides it. Put that back. Put the master window switch back in. Connect all three connectors. Make sure they click. It has one of these clips on each end to lock it in. So just slide it straight down and press it in. Last but not least, put this screw in on the door handle. And then the cap with the cover. And there you have it. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.